Tonight on At Discovery Canada, sex appeal in a bottle. How perfume laced with pheromones led to great improvements in some women's love lives. Hello, welcome to At Discovery Canada. I'm Jane Gilbert. And I'm Jay Ingram. A scientist in San Francisco is putting sex appeal in a bottle. Pheromones are chemicals that can send out very powerful but undetectable signals. Signals like, I'm interested in sex. So when a group of women in San Francisco was asked to mix a certain pheromone with their perfume, their love lives took off, got more dates, got kissed more often, had more sex. Dr. Winifred Cutler isolated the pheromone used in that research and is now marketing it around the world. And joining us from Chester Springs, Pennsylvania is Dr. Winifred Cutler. Dr. Cutler, just what is this special ingredient that the women had in their perfume? This is the Athena pheromone, 1013 for women. It's a female sex attractant, about a teaspoon of, of fluid. It has no odor and it's added to about two ounces of a woman's perfume. So what's the natural role for this chemical? I think we haven't begun to learn the full scope of it. What we know so far is this chemical serves to announce to the world, here's an attractive woman. And the way women experience it, when they wear it on a regular basis, men are more attentive to them. The, the kinds of behaviors that Dr. McCoy recorded were behaviors like sleeping next to a romantic partner, hugging, petting, affection, kissing, sexual mm -hmm. intercourse, formal dating, that is women were asked out in advance by appointment where men made, these were single women around 27 years old, so in that particular population, one of the things they measured and got very remarkable results were women who wore the pheromone got asked out for dates more mm. often. S stay with the pheromone for just a moment. How did you find it in the first place? It's about 30 years of research now. It began with my studies that was, were examining how a woman's pattern of sexual behavior affects her fertility. And we had learned back in the early 70s, mid 70s, that a woman who has regular week, minimum weekly, never misses a week of expo intimate exposure to a man, circulates twice as much estrogen, is more fertile, ages more slowly. She gets a number of benefits from regular exposure to a romantic relationship. And we went looking in the early 80s for what was it that a man provided for a woman that left to her own devices was not sufficient. What was a man, what was there about the relationship that was triggering these effects? And we searched for pheromones because of the animal literature that had preceded us by about 50 years. We knew that in nature animals communicate romantic, well we wouldn't call them romantic, would we? But we know that in nature animals communicate availability for reproduction. They communicate they're ready and they're ripe and they're interested. And some animals are more successful in luring the opposite sex to them than other animals are. And we've learned that the essential chemistry of that success seems to be the pheromones. In humans, we found them in the underarm. In other animals, they're located in other parts. And they seem to be species specific. A, a pig pheromone, which will be very attractive to a pig, in humans will be a sort of a keep away, it'll be aversive. <laughs> so uh, pheromones were indeed used in the San Francisco study. Can you give us a, a quick outline of just what the study found? Yes, um, six behaviors were measured. The, each woman had a daily calendar, which you can look at, and that calendar provided a way for her to check off each day each of those six behaviors that had occurred. At the end of the study, when the code was broken, the, the finding was that three out of four of the women who tested pheromones had an increase in, least three, in at least three different behaviors of the four intimate behaviors that were being measured. Those were really startlingly uh, higher than among the placebo users. Mm -hmm. Three out of four got positive results. Three out of four got more romance. And the women who entered this study, did, did they know what the study was about? Yes, they knew that they were signing up for a study that was designed to test a pheromone that was designed to increase the romance in their life. And they knew that they had a 50-50 chance of choosing a placebo or the real thing. And they knew that they would not know until the study ended and the code was broken which product they had tested. 
So I'm just just curious mm -hmm. of the, the the results. I mean, how much of that could have been swayed by the fact that the women knew they were being analyzed for sexual attractiveness? It's a very good question. You start out with everyone who's entering a study because they want more romance. 23% of the people who got t who tested the placebo got more romance. They didn't have the pheromones. They just were hoping for it. But 74% of the people who tested the pheromone got more romance. It was a three to one. That's how much, that's the difference. Now, if we can get back to the, the actual function of, of the pheromone, which you say is still a bit of a mystery, but mm -hmm. does the pheromone actually work on the man or does it work on the woman who is wearing it? I've been wondering that for the last 20 years. We really don't know. Uh, what we know is that if you measure, and what I do as a scientist and what the people who test the Athena products do in their, in their double-blind studies, we test the behavior of the person who's wearing it. Now, in this case, the women were the ones who were testing a product. The behavior was the behavior with men. But there was another behavior among the others, among the six sociosexual behaviors. Sleeping next to a partner involved them and somebody else. But there was also self-stimulation, masturbation. And that behavior did not show an increase in pheromone users. So we could conclude that pheromones did not cause a woman to have a greater interest in the behavior. We can't conclude that the pheromones worked first on him or first on her, because if she put it on her upper lip and she sniffed it, we don't really know whether in sniffing the pheromone she changed some form of the way she signals. But we do know that when she wears the pheromone, men are more responsive to her. It's very interesting. Thanks for telling us about it. You're welcome. We've been speaking with Dr. Winifred Cutler. She is the founder of the Athena Institute, and she joined us from Chester Springs, Pennsylvania.